Let's talk to Bill Blaine. Please note his new title. He is a strategist at Shard Capital. Bill, welcome. We haven't seen you all summer. Um, it's been great to be back. I've spent the whole summer on gardening leave. I've been off sailing uh, and done some more sailing, and then did some more sailing after that. Wonderful. Right, please make sure you give your new email address to the team so we can send you the video after this segment. Um, global markets, where do we begin? Well, this is a very interesting phase we're in just now. I mean, um, what we have is some very significant geopolitical challenges underway. We've got markets that seem to be running out of momentum. There's almost a null entropy feel to what's going on in global stocks. I also think we have a real liquidity crisis yep. developing in the global bond markets. And then, of course, we've got a number of special situations, for want of a better term. Saudi Arabia is one of them. Brexit is the second, and of course the third big one is Italy, and maybe that's the one to start with today, as we've got the ECB is likely to be telling Italy that their new budget, uh, sorry, the EU is going to be telling uh, Italy that their new budget is not compliant with the rules. And that really begs the question, and th let's step back from everything about Italy, about the split in the country between the very rich north and the very poor south. Stop worrying about the politics of populism and just ask the very simple question, why is Italy in the euro? The euro has done Italy precisely zero good yep. and is unlikely to do so moving forward. The country remains very heavily indebted, but on the same um, aspect, it's actually a very wealthy country in the north. I mean, if you've visited Italy, and I have recently, there is enormous wealth there. There is enormous poverty in parts of the country as well, and that's really a structural issue. And these structural issues have simply not been addressed. But even though the EU and the European Union will push Italy to reform, it's almost impossible to do that in the current austerity. So I think Italy is going to remain a big, big question for the markets. There are a lot of people out there just now saying that Italian bonds look very good value because they've widened to Germany. Yep. And certainly I think that has some, you know, th there are good points in that argument because I very much expect that Mario Draghi will do whatever it takes. There you go, the typical cliche about Draghi mm. to make sure it happens. But remember, we also have big change in Europe next year. We'll have a new head of the ECB. We will also have European elections, which are likely to um, have a European Parliament that is extremely populist, which could make decision-making extremely difficult for the EU elites. So a lot of challenges coming up. Can you expect that Italy will continue to get the whatever-it-takes support that it's had so far? And you've also got the unresolved issues with Italian banking. Then we come into the, the second special situation, which is Saudi Arabia. And I actually reckon this is a big geopolitical challenge. Um, you know, what's gone on with um, the, the murdered journalist is just beggars belief. But it's where we go from here that really matters. Politicians are trying to be pragmatic and say we must maintain ties with Saudi. Too many jobs are at stake. But you now have a population that is shocked and horrified by what they hear. And they are not going to react well to companies they own shares in still doing business. At the same time, we have a growing possibility of a new axis in the Middle East. Already we have Saudi forming links with Russia to push up oil prices. And you'll note that Russia is sending a very big delegation to this Davos in the desert conference that started yesterday. So there are whole new pressures going on there. And I, I, I have a feeling that we haven't seen the end of this. There are rumors running around, you know, people claiming to be informed about an imminent, imminent coup against Prince uh, MBS. Um, I, I feel that that's very unlikely mm -hmm. because he actually controls all the levers of power and the apparatus of state. Uh, I think this is going to be a long-term festering sore for the global economy. Right. And then, of course, we have our own little problems in yes. Europe in uh, Brexit. Brexit. I mean, yeah, I, I'm beginning, and you're going to be shocked when you hear this, Moose, but I'm beginning to form a grudging respect for Theresa May in the way that she's battling off the, the forces of conflict here. Um, if 
we see the government collapse, it's an open door for a Labour government. That, I think, is likely to spawn all kinds of unintended consequences, not least the rebellious Scots to the north declaring another referendum, and where do we go from there? Uh, the chances of real dislocation and serious dislocation in the UK, I think, are actually being underestimated at the moment. I think we'll know quite soon, though, whether all the noise we hear reported in the media actually turns into a genuine event, i.e. a turnaround in leadership. I suspect, and I hope, that we see this drag on unchanged for a while. As Theresa May says, we're 95% of the way there. It just is that last 5% is the most difficult 5% to get. And if anyone else knows a solution to the Northern Irish problem, then please share Put your it. Hand up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's wrap up with Mr. Trump. Now, that is a very interesting question. I mean, loathe him or loathe him is the question I usually ask. But um, what we are seeing is very interesting in the States. His approval ratings are actually climbing as we go into these midterm elections. We are no longer seeing the absolute um, hostility of the American left towards him. Generally, that whole side is beginning to be ignored now. Yeah, you're still seeing very funny parodies of Trump, but people aren't paying as much attention. Now they're looking to what he's actually done. Now, you could argue that by doing the tax cuts and ending Obamacare and many of the other measures he's taken, They've actually not really done anything except put more money into the hands of the wealthy. But he is giving a very clear perception to the American voter that he cares about their jobs yep. and he's Absolutely. fighting on their behalf. And that's the perception that is resulting in his approval rating going up as he goes into the midterms. And I suspect what we're really seeing here is the Republican Party coattailing on that. We were expecting to see the Democrats take the 25 seats or so that they need to control the House. It is now looking that in the battleground states, the Republicans are getting back up there, and we could see that remain in Republican hands. In which case, Trump is going to continue and push for a second term. But it's this changing perception of Trump. Loathe him or loathe him, he appeals to the American psyche because he is addressing their concerns and issues. And that is something that the left-wing intelligentsia absolutely hate. Well, I thought his inauguration um, speech was fantastic if I was a blue-collar worker in the USA. Yeah, and but I'm listen sure... to my accent. I'm a natural <clears throat> lefty. I'm a Scot. I listen to everything he says, and I'm shocked and horrified every time he opens his mouth. I'm um, offended by the comments he makes about women. I'm... I'm brutally angry about some of the comments he makes about immigration. But the bottom line is, he's delivering what his electorate were looking for. And that's why we need to reassess the whole idea of populist politics. Um, there was a very interesting quote that immediately struck me this morning, and I read it, a, a very good article in the Wall Street Journal, and it was a quote from Machiavelli. As a prince, you don't want to be loved. You want to be feared. And that's the direction that Trump is going down. He doesn't care what people think about them. He cares about giving them what they want. On that note, Bill, great to have you back. Always Thank a pleasure. You. And great to be back.